right, so we heard you have a little business. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Um, well, I'm currently the president at in and out Burger, which was a little mom and pop burger stand that started in 1948 and um, grew to be pretty big. <laughs> been a part of my life since I was born, I guess, being close with different people that work there. And, you know, it really got introduced into my life when my dad died. Both my parents were very loving. I remember being pretty cheerful, little girl that was a little bit spoiled because my siblings were 12 and 16 years older than me. My dad was, uh, really funny. He was a little bit eccentric, loved to make people laugh, loved to laugh himself. He used to explain songs to me. We had this connection with, with music, with love music. He spoke to me like I was an adult when I was four years old. Somehow he had wisdom and discernment that, you know, I was going to be exposed to so many different things in life and I was going to need that straightforwardness and that honesty. Probably around age five or six, I noticed uh, we were going to visit my dad in the hospital. And I thought it was just the hospital he was staying at, but it turned out to be a rehab. And my mom explained it just that he was sick. It wasn't until I was older that I realized he had a drug addiction from different surgeries he'd had and a lot of pain in his past. Pain that he didn't know what to do with it was really hard for me to see him fail and to be weak because I knew how bad he wanted to be a good husband and a good father. It's a matter of time before the drugs and uh, another woman, and then that was pretty much it. I got divorced when I was 12, and that's when I really started longing for that attention and that love because my dad was the greatest source of that. One day I was on my way to school and he had called in the morning and I talked to him and I was rushing him off the phone because I had to go to school. And that was the last time I talked to him. My world shattered. After my dad died, there was no way I was going to be alone. He's gone, so I had even greater reason to fill the void. I got married when I was 18. I'd graduated a couple months before that. You know, it, it wasn't right. I knew that that small, still voice had told me, don't do this, and I did it. And I, I paid the price with a divorce. And jumped right into uh, the arms of someone else. At that point, I pretty much realized I'm the outcast in the family. Now I'm divorced and I figured, you know, I might as well just, <laughs> might as well just embrace this. Started smoking pot, drinking, which were things that I really had wanted to stay away from after watching my dad. I realized that I'm gonna follow in the footsteps of my father and that I'm gonna meet an early death if I do not get right with God and, and follow him because the enemy just wanted to wipe me out. I could let go of the pot and the alcohol, but letting go of the guy was something different because being alone, I just, I didn't, I didn't want to be alone. I just was praying and asking for God to give me the strength to do what was right. I knew that I couldn't go back home that night and sleep with my boyfriend. I had to tell him, hey, this isn't happening. You know, if you're going to be doing any of those things, don't do them around me. He ended up uh, getting saved. So then I'm like, okay, now I can get married. It was the fast track and we got married in November. Was it really the right thing? I can't say no because I have two precious children from that marriage, but um, six years later, another divorce, um, a 
another affair if I couldn't feel like a bigger failure at that point. I just couldn't recover who I was. So alone, didn't last long. I ended up in another relationship. We ended up having a child together. We got married and I married him because I didn't want to be alone and I felt like, okay, this will be right. He married me because of money. I was cheated on off and on for three and a half years. First time I found out he cheated on me, I'm like, well, you know, I deserve it. <laughs> I'm paying for it. He cheated on me while I was pregnant, disrespected. Never had I been talked to the way he talked to me. Treated like trash. It was the worst time of my life. You can see where someone that just wants that love and appreciation was getting further and further away from, from what she wanted. Starting to believe the lies that I deserve that and that God's punishing me. The things that can be said can cut you very, very deeply and can change who you believe you think you are. I just continued to put up with it. No way could I get divorced again. I mean, how old am I? And I've been divorced a handful of times, really. It was terrible, and it really, it really pushed me. God took me to a place that I'd never been before, and he showed me that in that time where I felt more alone than ever, more of a piece of trash than ever, more of a failure, that he was there and he was ready to love me and fill that void. And he'd been there all along wanting that, but he just needed me to let go of that tangible person. It was my dad first, then it was the next guy. The next guy, I was never willing to just let go to see that God had something better. I was forced to at this time because this was something I couldn't change. This was someone that was throwing me to the curb. I was divorced again and uh, knew it was time to take time away. That time alone was some of my greatest memories with God. It was an alone that was okay because I wasn't completely alone. I had the Jesus that walked on water, healed the sick. I had that Jesus filling that void, touching my heart, pouring into who I'm called to be and who he sees me as rather than who I would believed I was because of the things I'd done. I really valued the love and good times I had with my dad, but even that can't compare completely to the love that God has for me. It's like, you know, you, you're a little kid riding your bike for the first time, your dad's proud and he's cheering you on, and it's like he helped me learn how to ride that bike, and, and God got me back up after all of these failures, and he can lift me up and see me go forward, and I know that he can be glorified. And <laughs> riding a bike and a proud dad versus creator of the universe being able to use you is like... <laughs> My name is Lindsay Snyder, and I am second.